tomorrow is A level maths, paper one, and you are going to get an A star. How do I know that? Well, because you are watching this video and I am about to tell you what topics are undoubtedly going to be coming up on the paper tomorrow, the common mistakes that students are always making that you need to avoid, and the best exam technique that you can be employing whilst you are sat in the exam doing your A-level maths paper one to make sure that you get the best marks you can possibly get. Okay, so I have been through the examiner's reports and I have got a list of the topics that occur most frequently and the ones that perhaps haven't been tested so much in recent years that are probably quite likely to come up this year, as well as having looked at the examiner's reports themselves and actually seen what the examiners have been saying, the common errors that are associated with each topic area. So let's start with the first topic, which is generally going to be algebra and functions. This is designed mainly for OCR, AQA and Excel, which broadly have the same sort of topic categories, even if they're not categorized in the same order or using the exact same words, they're broadly the same thing. So algebra and functions, obviously quadratics are going to come up. It's not going to be a big question because it's a GCSE topic, but just make sure you know how to get your calculator to solve a quadratic for you because then you know it's definitely going to be right. And when that's the first step of a multi-part question, you don't want to be losing a mark on that very first step. Um, again, simultaneous equations, your calculator can solve them for you. Make sure you know how that actually happens, but also make sure that you'd be able to write out your working as well, because even if you're using the calculator to solve a quadratic or a simultaneous equation, you do need to put your sort of method down in order to get those method marks. So if you do make a mistake anywhere else, you don't want to be accidentally sort of making a stupid mistake by just not writing down your method. You know, you might have typed in a number wrong into your calculator or whatever it is. Um, polynomials, know the factor theorem, know the remainder theorem, and know how to do algebraic division particularly on division because that hasn't come up, it hasn't been tested as rigorously in the past couple of years as it had been previously. So do make sure you are putting some focus on that um, and make sure that you're able to sort of explain the use of it as well. It, I mean, more for the theorems because they sometimes ask you to do a little bit of a wordy, you know, why is it being used in this context? Um, and then lastly, graph transformations. They are so fundamental. You should know them from GCSE, but it's translations, stretches, reflections. Make sure you know how to sketch them. Do a little bit of practice of sketching tonight if you can get on desmos i had a maths teacher that was absolutely obsessed with desmos uh, and i completely understand why i think it was an absolutely wonderful application so go use desmos tonight to practice your graphs and in terms of this topic area the common errors that will come up is incorrect factorizing and expansion especially if there are negatives like it is the most basic thing but just check your signs i know it's a level maths it's not gcse but check your signs because errors are made there very frequently as well as not thinking about where the brackets are going so if you sort of misplace your brackets when you're factorizing then that can do it wrong misplace your brackets when you're expanding you're kind of then multiplying things that shouldn't really be multiplied so just make sure you're copying things down from the question into your working really really carefully and lastly sign errors again when you're rearranging equations so as you're moving things from one side to the other of the equal signs which technically you're not doing you know you're adding to both sides subtracting from both sides but you know moving things from one side. make sure you know that your signs are going to be correct moving on to the next topic this is calculus this is differentiation this is integration you need to know how to do differentiation integration and you need to have right at the forefront of your of your head the different ways of doing it so you need to know first of all what they're both for so differentiation in terms of finding the gradient in terms of what it's actually telling you and then integration in terms of being sort of the reverse of differentiation make sure that that relationship is really at the front of your head also be really aware as to whether you're doing definite or indefinite integration because i bet you can guess what the most common error in integration is it's forgetting the plus c when you're doing indefinite integration so be really super careful about that one and make sure when you are doing definite integration you know exactly how you're doing that you're writing out everything step by step not just using your calculator to do it because you can use your calculator but they want to see you're working so be very careful on that and also implicit differentiation tends to be really really poorly answered if you can do your implicit differentiation, then you're almost guaranteed to pick up marks because it's almost guaranteed to come up. And those students who don't understand it, well, they're going to be losing out. Um, and in terms of this, again, the co common errors are people not knowing the chain rule um, or integration by parts. So you need to just 
I would have a look over them. I would put them onto a cheat sheet tonight so that they are there in the morning for you to look at. You can just very quickly glance over them, make sure you remember all of the different kinds and then you're going to be able to apply them in the exam itself. And the last one is also putting incorrect limits on, indef on definite integration, particularly if you're finding areas that sort of go both above and below. So if you have a graph that's, for example, and you've got your x-axis here and the graph is going like this, then you need to remember that you need to do, you need to take the limits of each bit separately because otherwise this bit that's negative will take away from the bits that are positive, essentially. That is the least mathematical explanation of why it is the case. But just check your limits on indefinite integration. And we're going to move on to the next topic now. This is trigonometry. Obviously, you will be familiar with Socratera and the likes from GCSE. But it's making sure that you know that your graphs are really quite solid. So make sure you can plot them. You can you understand like you know where is it going past the x-axis? How high are they? And being able to do transformations of trigonometric graphs is also something that's tested really very frequently, and that students tend to do really quite poorly on. So again, if you're a student who can do well on it, that's going to be marks that you can pick up. Um, and in trigonometry, the most common error is people using radians instead of degrees or degrees instead of radians. So make sure you know, check the question, what is it asking you to be doing it in? Um, and also not considering all solutions. So obviously, you know, based on your identities, that if you've got sort of a certain value, then you can have different trig values that match up to it. So if you're asked to find the solution, zzz, make sure you're giving the solutions in the plural. Make sure you're finding all of the possible solutions within the given range, because you'll pretty much always be given a range to get your solutions in. Um, and lastly, remember your identities. Sine squared x plus cos squared x equals one, that sort of thing. The next topic we have sequences and series. For sequences and series, arithmetic, geometric. Make sure you know both the nth sum and also the sort of finding the sum to infinity when that applies. So make sure those are sort of in, in the forefront of your mind, but also the binomial expansion. I know this is like a formula sheet level, but make sure you sort of understand its application as well as sort of its formula, because that's going to help you avoid the very common fit pitfall of miscounting terms in a sequence or sort of not utilizing the binomial expansion when it actually needs to be used in a question. There's obviously gonna be exponentials and logarithms, and these are more than likely going to focus on modeling real life scenarios. So I would get in a bit of practice of this if you're if it's not something you feel very confident in. Obviously remember your exponential laws, Lord of in, laws of indices, depends what your teacher calls them, and your log laws as well. They are super important. And the natural log, making sure you understand how that works too. That is going to be quite crucial because that is almost indefinitely going to be come up, coming up. And so is the last topic, which is proof that a lot of students forget about. Proof by contradiction, um, proof by exhaustion, those sorts of things. They are almost definitely going to come up, if not in this paper, then in the next paper. But I would focus some of your energy on just making sure that you've put all the different kinds of proofs in your head, just to be sure that if it comes up, you're going to be able to answer the question. In terms of exam technique, make sure that you are checking your units. Make sure you see, okay, how many significant figures does this need to be given to? Do I need to round anything? Those are things that you cannot be affording to lose marks on because there will be very tricky questions. There will be questions that perhaps you don't know how to approach. You don't want to be losing the easy marks to give yourself room to lose marks on those harder questions. But obviously we don't want to be losing marks on those harder questions. So what you should try to do is when you come across a question and you're thinking, I have no idea how to respond to this, what I want you to do is I want you to first have a look and underline the key terms in that question, underline the key sort of values that you're given in that question and think, OK, what can I do? If this is a question that is obviously about trigonometry, OK, can I do some trigonometric manipulation? Spending five minutes on a five marker, even if it's not going to get you towards your answer, that's still within a minute of mark and you're putting something down on the page because if you put something down, then you can at least get some method marks. And if you put nothing down, there's no chance of you getting any marks. So I know what I'd rather be doing. Those are my tips for A-level maths, paper one. Good luck, and I hope it goes really well.